Buried deep within the halls of the Dungeon of Dread lies the crypt of Zog the Mighty. Once a great and powerful knight, he was corrupted by evil magic. Now a powerful Dread Knight, he is compelled to guard the magical cauldron of the evil Witch Queen. Defeat him and claim the cauldron for yourself. Welcome to Visual PKM, I'm Jolt. Obsidian is an amazing platform for playing board games. We're going to play Pencils and Powers solo RPG with Excolitra, Dice Roller and Obsidian MD today. I'll show you a very simple but fun setup. I'll include a link to the GitHub repo with this vault in the description should you want to play or contribute. This video is a spin-off of my collaboration with Nicole van der Hoven. Friday this week at the PKM Summit in Utrecht, we are doing a shared presentation about RPG with Obsidian, Obsidian Sync and Excolidraw, including some practical applications of the setup for PKM and CRM. In this video, I'll show you how to configure Excolidraw templates and folders how to add area references to images and display those in hover previews, how to recolor SVG icons, and a few other practical tips and tricks useful not just when playing board games. We'll start by creating an empty game board by clicking the Excolidraw ribbon button. Notice how I have three different templates in the select template list. However, only the Dread Knight is fully configured. This is the first of 11 different games in the Pencils and Powers series. Now, before we jump into the game, I want to show you how the templates are set up. Templates are simply Excolidro files in a designated folder that Excolidro duplicates when creating a new drawing. This is my templates folder with the three files. If I control or command click on any of these, I can open the template files in a new tab. When I create a new drawing from the template, everything in the template is copied to the new drawing and the empty game file is saved in the games folder. Let's quickly look at the template, file name and folder configurations in plugin settings. Under basic, you can see the template folder is called templates and the Excolidro folder is called games. Then further down under saving, I configured the file name prefix to be game followed by a space and the date format as year, month, day. To get us started, I'm going to open the dice tray from the dice roller plugin. Notice that I have already configured three different sets of dice. The 3D6U will roll three six-sided dice until three unique values are returned. I need this for my game setup. Then I have a single D6 that I will use during attacks and mystery encounters. Finally, my action dice set are three D6 dice. To initiate game setup, I'm going to roll my unique value dice set. I rolled a 2, a 5 and a 6. On the game sheet, the setup is in the top right corner. I need to assign the three numbers to gold, treasures and monsters. I don't think it makes a big difference which number I assign to treasures and monsters but it does make a big difference that I get as much gold in the beginning as possible. I'll need the gold to level up my heroes. For this reason, I'm assigning six to gold, five to monsters and two to treasures. Now let's implement these settings. First of all, I'm going to update coins by typing six. I have six gold coins. Next, I'm going to assign the monsters to their holes. The first monster on the list is assigned to room 5, the next to room 6, 
When you reach 6, you need to continue with rooms 1, 2, 3 and 4. Zog, the boss monster, is in room 4. Once the numbers are assigned, I'm going to distribute the monsters to each of their holes. Notice, in the instructions for Zog, his door is magically shut when the heroes arrive at the Dungeons of Dread. To copy the closed door simple, I will hold down the Alt or Option key and drag the symbol to make a copy, then use the rotate handle to rotate. As I rotate the door, I'm holding down the Shift key to ensure the door rotates with discrete angles. We are now going to distribute the treasure following the same logic as for the monsters. The first treasure goes to room 2, the next to room 3, and so on. Now that we are ready with the game setup, I just want to make one final quick detour before we begin our quest. When I first played the game, I was constantly flipping between the help PDF and the game sheet. To make this easier for myself, I added these question mark symbols. If I hover over the link indicator while pressing the control or command key, the relevant section from the help will pop up. Let's open the PNP rules from the rules folder by control or command clicking on the file. This is an Excolidro drawing with the PDF pages embedded. I want you to notice these light gray rectangles. Let's flip back for a moment to the game board. If I control or command hover over this link, I can see the area of the relevant gray box in the pop-up preview. To implement this, simply select this rectangle and then here in the Obsidian Tools panel, click copy link to element and select the area link. I now have the embed link on the clipboard. If you press Ctrl or Command K on any element in Excolidraw, you can add a link. I'm going to paste my area link here and delete the exclamation mark from the beginning since I am now not embedding the image to a document, only adding it as an element link. If we control or command hover over the element now, the pop-up preview will show the area covered by the rectangle. Our game setup is ready, I'll start playing. The entire quest took about an hour. It was good fun. My learning is I should have been more strategic about advancing the treasures in a few selected rooms only, instead of trying to go for all the treasure in all of the rooms. Starting monster attacks late in the game and leaving almost all of them to the variant was strategically not a clever choice. Killing a few monsters early on while they're still weak would have given me the option of allocating dice rolls to those monsters, thus mitigating building up the strength and health of all the monsters in the dungeon. Additionally, I was super unlucky with my attacks. In almost all the cases, I rolled a 2 with my attack die and was forced to use all the special powers of my heroes to defeat monsters. Had I not had some luck during my attack of Zog, I wouldn't have been able to complete the quest. On a practical note, in all the cases, such as building the path, increasing the health and attack power of monsters, increasing the treasures in the holes, copying dice rolls in the log, I used the same solution. I held down Alt or Option on a Mac to make a copy of the shape and held down Shift to rotate by fixed angles. This approach made it super simple and convenient to color squares on the sheet. Additionally, having the help available by hovering the question marks is also extremely handy, as this way checking the rules during the game is very easy and intuitive. 
Overall, I'm pretty happy with this game setup and will definitely use it for other board games as well. It really felt like playing on paper with the added benefit that I can also play it on the go and that I don't need a printer. In the PKM Summit presentation with Nicole, we will demonstrate how a similar setup can be used to play in a collaborative fashion using Obsidian Sync. To wrap up today's video, I'd like to show you a couple of additional tips and tricks you might want to use when setting up a game of your own. First, how do you add a PDF to a drawing? Well, that's pretty simple. Click on Insert any file and choose one of the PDF files. Notice how I am inserting only page one because that's the game sheet. After the PDF is inserted, I recommend sizing the image such that standard size text fits the pages nicely. This is to help with efficiency so you don't need to fiddle with custom font sizes. When you're happy with the size, you should log the image so you do not accidentally select and move it around. Now, the other thing that you might have already noticed is how I have my icons with different colors. In reality, I downloaded all these icons in black from gameicons.net and applied a hidden feature to recolor images. Note, what I'm going to show you only works with SVGs. For demonstration, I will shift drag the assassin to the scene. I now need to switch over to Markdown View to change the color of the assassin. But before doing so, I'm going to use this circle to select the new fill color I'd like to use. When I'm happy with the color, I copy the color number to the clipboard. Switching over to Markdown View, under the Embedded Files section, I need to open a curly bracket and write the following short JSON statement that defines the mapping between original colors and new colors. The original color in this case is black, expressed as six zeros. Finally, before switching back to Excolidro view mode, I will move my cursor to another line because I notice that sometimes Obsidian does not save these changes unless I change lines in the editor. And voila, the assassin is now blue. Now, if you want a blue and a red assassin similar to the different color treasure chests, that will require an additional little trick. Let's switch to Markdown view mode again. The trick is to duplicate this line, changing the color mapping to red in the second one. For this to take effect, I need to change the long ID number. I will now change 9F to 1F. And finally, you need to find the original ID in the Excolitra script below in the JSON section and modify one of the file IDs to begin with 1F instead of 9F. Switching back to Excolidro view, we can see that one of the assassins is now red. Next, if I want to create yet another game template, then I recommend the following approach as opposed to starting from scratch. Make a copy of one of the game templates. Don't worry, by default it will open in markdown mode, but you can always switch over to Excolidro view mode. To replace the Dread Knight sheet, I can change the link to the Dragon Castle Challenge, sheet A4 DCC, like this. The benefit of this approach is if I now look at the drawing, I will have a game sheet almost ready with many of the necessary components on the sheet already. Now, of course, some of these squares are in the wrong place, but the chests are good. I would need to delete my monsters, of course, because I have different monsters in the Dragon Castle challenge and would need to search for these monsters on game icons. I would also need to modify the path tiles a little, but still, 
This way you get a head start with the changes. Other than that, this is all I wanted to show you today. I hope you find this as much fun as I did. And just a final reminder, I'm going to share the link to this vault on GitHub. If you want to collaborate, I would welcome collaboration on this vault to configure additional solo RPG game sheets for all of us to enjoy.